Hello and welcome everybody to Halo RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd. This is the 6,700 pound Wildwood 27 rear kitchen coming in on just a beautiful day for us today. Couldn't have been blessed with anything nicer. This is the single most popular non bunkhouse Wildwood in their lineup and for good reason. It gives us a huge sense of living space with just panoramic windows all over the place. Awesome kitchen storage and an amazing prep area. I think this has the best kitchen prep space of any Wildwood out there. Uh, but it also is kind of what I call like a bit of a dual kitchen where it's got a little mini outdoor camp kitchenette, which means you're never more than an arm length away from the, you know, say a conventional iced tea or perhaps the more Long Island variety, whatever you please. <laughs> Dad's medicine cabinets inside and out basically. Also, you got that griddle cooking station outdoors if you want to utilize that. Uh, the, the ceiling's a little bit taller, the colors are lighter and brighter. It has that Swiss Army Super Sofa Versa Lounge that can be a big sofa, a giant sleeper, has storage, you have dinette functions, it only does everything. The bedroom has extra closet space, the shower's a little bit taller for goofballs like me. And I tell you, there's just not much it doesn't do very well. Now there's plenty of different brands to build a similar floor plan like this. Like Cherokee does a very good version. I might leave a link to that down in the video description. After you watch this, check that one out and let me know on either video, like if your money was on the line, which way would you go with? I always appreciate that feedback. And if there's something you like or any questions you have, or if there's something you'd like to see different, share that in the comment section too. And if you haven't done so, hit the subscribe button. We'd love to have you here and let's get started. And this is what I'm talking about right here. It's a one slide RV that feels a lot like a multi-slide living room. You've got a tall ceiling, light and bright colors, huge panoramic windows everywhere. You've got a, a fairly bright color palette. It's definitely uh, in the realm of neutral, but it's on the lighter side of neutral. But over here, you start with this giant picture window over here on the camp side of your RV, which allows you to enjoy your site. You know, you don't necessarily only have to take a look at the neighbors here. Now, one of the other cool things on this is going to be a bit of a culture shock for the camera, but this has those kind of blackout night roller shades on here too, which is something almost no RVs within a stick and tin class have. That tends to be a laminated feature, and even then, there's still quite a few laminated RVs that only do things like pleated shades, which are fine. There, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's like two steps above metallic mini blinds that have historically commonly been associated with this classification of RV. Now, there's not daylight shining above that slide. It, it, it's almost unheard of in the RV industry. It turns out that, yes, you can use LED lighting that isn't disco blue. <laughs> I know some folks like the blue lights. I get that. I prefer what they've done here with just a, a plain white light. It makes for a neat little nighttime uh, light, and where that will actually work nicely in this model is over here with the exclusive Versa Lounge. It only does everything. Right now, I've got it displayed in lounge mode just to make it obvious that it's not a traditional sofa and dinette arrangement, but that, that L-shaped cushion right there, that backer, can flip-flop around either side. If you want to make it a big, giant sofa like this where a long-legged guy like me could stretch out or the, the family could kind of gather around, it faces toward the entertainment center, which is nice. You can do that. You can turn it back into a sofa plus a two-bench dinette. There's no rules. You could turn it into one giant sleeper. You could make it kind of like open-air seating a little bit. There's a lot you can do with these. We've got cross breeze windows on the sides of the slide out. They leave your main big windows uh, unobstructed so you really get kind of like maximum visibility of, uh, of everything. And rear kitchens, personally, I think they're one of, if not the very best RVs for destination use because look at the prep space you get. Uh, the, there's easy reach appliance outlets in this and with it being a stick and tin trailer, that means that they can more easily install wall-mounted outlets that laminated trailers very often struggle with. So like back here, you've got that perfect little coffee maker corner and just a ton of countertop prep space here. I'll get all this storage opened up for you in just a minute. First, I just want to give us kind of complete the look of the living room here. Now, those two recliners are totally free floating. So if you choose to add a TV, because not everybody goes camping just to watch the tube. I get that. You, uh, you can turn them toward the entertainment center. And remember over here with the Versa Lounge, you can also turn everything uh, to, to really face toward uh, the entertainment as well. Kind of like I've done here. If you want to, like, you want to kind of, here, let me put you in the driver's seat. 
if you come over here, put you in the point of view. You kind of put your back on this lounge. Oh, actually, no, I'm not going to put my, my shoe on somebody's furniture. If you just kind of kick your foot up there, I got some nicer socks on today, thankfully. There's still room for somebody down at that end to uh, be there. You can just kind of sit here. You can lounge. You can just max and relax, as the <laughs> Fresh Prince of Bel Air would say. And I mean, this is a... Uh, this is a pretty cool, comfortable experience right here. But again, one of the best things about Rear Kitchens is, folks, they are the, the best for prep space and the best for storage of anything in this size in this class. You're just not going to beat a Rear Kitchen. So I figured as long as we're talking about the Entertainment Center, we'll go ahead and start our little storage tour right there. You got some handy, almost like DVD pockets on either side. If you choose to off the back of that uh, Bluetooth little sound bar right there, so quick note on that right there, you might have noticed how you're seeing exposed speakers. You're not seeing that nice little, I don't know, mesh, fabric, whatever, face covering on it. That's not Wildwood's fault. That's my fault. When I was first coming through the RV, I kind of, when I was running the camera, lost my balance a little bit. Trip fell, bumped into it, kind of broke it. We got a replacement part coming for us. So don't hold that one against Wildwood. Hold that one against me. Well, you can uh, run an HDMI cord up here, and I mean... That is just, you can put whatever screen you want on it, should you choose to do that. That is just nice and big and wide open. You can put some very large game day entertainment jumbotrons up there. And notice how it's its almost like it's floating, which creates a giant shoe garage. Now, one of the other really cool things with the Versa Lounge is that it includes five of these food grade storage totes right here, totaling 20.3 cubic foot of additional easy reach slides to use storage capacity. There's three totes under the sofa. There is one under each of the dinette benches. Uh, this one over here, I'm using that tote just to keep the pantry door open. But you also see that you've got yourself a, uh, a large pantry space over there next to that 10.7 cubic foot 12 volt DC compressor fridge. Wildwood uh, was the first mainstream manufacturer to standardize the use of that device. And that's one of the amazing things here. Historically, Wildwood had been kind of very simple, very safe, very in the pocket. And in the last couple seasons here, they've become very aggressive, very progressive. They've really started adding some new thoughts and new things in here. Now, you might notice how that rear kind of vertical area back here is partitioned off. That's because there's a little bit of a camp kitchen uh, in that vicinity. But that taller compartment right there, I think that that's absolutely perfect for things like baking sheets or stuff like that, some taller, unusually sized stuff. You may also notice how you've got the uh, the triple drawers right there, but notice how they're drawers inside of a door. That's what's called the active Susie as opposed to lazy Susan. Long story short, by, by doing that, by eliminating the face of three drawers, or of, of a couple drawers, they're able to squeeze more drawer space in there and give you taller clearance inside the drawers so you're less likely to, to knock your stuff around as you're opening and closing the drawers. And then right next door, just below that nice high-rise sprayer faucet sink, a wide open space, whether it's big pots and pans or, um, oh, what am I wanting to say? Uh, waste basket, it's a giant waste basket, plenty of room for things. Now, those free floating recliners, they're great for a little midday snooze, and if they're fully reclined, you see that even with the, uh, the the sofa in the sleeper position, there's still plenty of room to walk through here. But that's one of the other beautiful parts of the Versa Lounge I want to show you. Because it's not just a sleeper sofa or dinette. It's a full super slide, like, mega sleeper. You can easily sleep a couple adults uh, toes to toes right there. You got a couple littles coming over for the weekend. You can do that. The, the roller shades really do a heck of a job of blotting out all of a sudden and they roll down nicely past the windows so here you're, you're not really getting a lot of light bleed through here but one of the other neat things you can kill all your main lights and then just like the little accent lighting uh, above the side will act as a very good night light for you and it seems like little things but if wildwood's very good at just simple smart things like a digital thermostat instead of an analog one. This is something that everybody would prefer to have anyway. And it's amazing how many even some sometimes some some higher dollar laminated trailers are still using a, uh, a more traditional. I don't want to say ancient style thermostat, but uh, I'm going to say ancient style thermostat. <laughs> if you take a look here, you can see my uh, mug up there in the shower space. One of the nice things about these with the six nine ceiling is it does allow that extra height for people like me. And that's a radius bar here on the shower so that when you close that little curtain door there, it gives you a little bit more elbow room. And again, it doesn't seem like much, but when you're actually in that 36 by 30 inch shower, 
it makes a big difference. And it wouldn't be a Halid RV tour if we didn't do some hashtag toilet selfies. And thankfully, with the way this one's kind of corner angled, I think it is fairly fluffy friendly. Now with this one, to see the uh, vanity and sink and stuff, I actually have to go inside and close the door. And I, I actually, I really like that nice wide open space to the right there. Um, extra space for uh, like a toilet paper stand or something like that. And you might have noticed all the countertops in this are a sealed edge pressed membrane. Little accent wall there in the bathroom is a nice touch. Over here, on kind of like beside the shower, it's like an, a nice little space for some extra toilet paper. Maybe, uh, you know, keep your towels there. Notice how it is a mirrored medicine cabinet. But I will tell you folks, I have located one major defect in this RV. And uh, you're looking at it. Now, a, a lot of RVs have very similar living rooms, very similar bathrooms. I think where Wildwood really defines themselves and takes it over the top is what they do in the bedrooms for me. They have all the same kind of attention to detail here. Every little area of this feels like it's been dressed and pressed in a little way. It's not just a box where you close the door and you lay down. You could do that here, but it's the way that it functions when you're in here that I think is nobody else in this class does it this well. My opinion, but uh, you know, fight me. Am I wrong on that? Take a look at this. So first of all, we have a door, not just like a, a curtain or anything. And on the right-hand side there, you see a light switch. That will be for our overhead lights, because again, a little taller ceiling, sometimes a little harder for people to reach. Even up here in the bedroom, notice how they're still doing the night roller shades. A lot of brands will phase that out once you get into the bedroom and leave the living area, even if they're doing a nice shade. A lot of times you'll still get a pleated shade or a, uh, a mini blind or something here. That extra tall, full viewing window over here also opens for maximum airflow, which is another little, uh, we'll, put, we'll start making a tally on here. We're already up to like three or four. Now we're gonna add the CPAP storage stands. You see how those outlets are inside the full length hanging closet right there? But that cutaway allows you to potentially have your CPAP machine uh, up near your head without being kind of like dangled all over the place uh, when you're not using it. Everything can kind of tuck away. And if you're not a CPAP user, but you're claustrophobic, it makes everything not look and feel so small. Now, one of the things people want to know is, is it a true queen or is it a shorty? This is a shorty. And I know you're thinking, dude, you said this is a best in class bedroom and you're talking to me about a shorty bed, but they leave you like two feet at the foot of the bed. So if you want to go to an 80 inch uh, true queen, you can and still have plenty of room to walk around the thing. Now, one more thing, if we flip the bed up, you see it's a plywood base, it's easy lift. You can, uh, well, it's also got basically almost sort of like under the Versa Lounge. You've got tote storage down there, but there's also another little shoe garage. So you could use that in a sense that's almost like your dresser. And over here, that window's a little differently shaped, by the way, because that is a fire escape window. Kind of a, a safety code thing, but even that still has the nicer shade on it. So if we open that up, couple things. It's not just a big wide open closet space. Like it is really nice that you've got some really good hanging storage space here. You kind of have that little shelf there that goes above. I think it's maybe the water heater. There's something outside that that's kind of masking, but it works like a little shoe shelf. Maybe you can put some brooms in here. You got a little hat storage above the, the extra light in that closet is also, I think a nice little touch TV hookups straight across from the bed here. And I also wanted to take the extra moment to close up the slide and show you the RV in road mode. The entry door over here on the left, the bathroom on the right, <laughs> as that Creedence Clearwater revival song, well, people seem to think is, is that easily the most uh, butchered and misheard lyric in the history of music? <laughs> but regardless, with the super slide closed right here, this is kind of why I say rear kitchens like this, I think there's some of the best models for use at a destination. And a 27 RKS like this, it's the right size, it's the right weight. You can still move it around from destination A to B, but I think it's best used when you're going to really set up shop for a while, because the way that all this stuff kind of interacts, it does get a little bit tight. But that being said, you can, you can work with this a little bit, I think. Because the Versa Lounge gives us the, well, <laughs> versatility that most other rear kitchens don't because this bench can just be removed. I'm not saying it is the most convenient area to access back here, but the fact is you can do a little hip hop anonymous and you can work your way around into the kitchen space here and the refrigerator, the freezer, they're most certainly not fully accessible for transit, but I can crack my arm in here enough. I can reach back there enough.
that as long as I know I'm packing for travel purposes, I can put a couple things where I need them, like maybe some lunch meat for a quick little travel stop. So is it a super uh, Cracker Barrel friendly model? No. But if it's if we've been driving, if we got delayed, if I got held over somewhere and I just, I'm stuck in a parking lot overnight and I can't deploy the slide, but buddy, I need a bite to eat real quick and everything's closed or busy or whatever. Could I make this work? Yeah, I could make it work better than most rear kitchens, in fact. And I hope you appreciate the extra little time and effort we take to display the little things like that. If you do, hit the little subscribe button and let's hop outside. I tell you what, I, I like Wildwood. I have for a number of years. I liked them before we carried them. Uh, when they went away from that brown, brown, and browner exterior and went to this kind of like white and graphite with like little copper accents, they just really kind of came to life to me. Now over here in your kind of like, you know, patio picnic space, there's a lot of good stuff going on. It, it's a great floor plan for just kind of sitting inside and chilling, but you can come outside and do some grilling. You could come outside next to your picnic table, chew the fat, shoot the breeze with somebody. Great patio space, of course, LED lighting below that easy adjust uh, awning space there. And another cool thing Wildwood does, it doesn't necessarily specifically relate to the patio area, but we have a good look at it here, are the strong arm stabilizer jack legs right here. Those yellow bars, when you get to your campsite, you crank those suckers down, even just hand tightening them. And this thing, I swear, it feels like it's on, it feels like a fifth wheel with an auto leveling system. It is so sturdy and so stable. And especially as people are moving around the RV, it takes a ton of that wiggle and jiggle out. And then combine that with the stability you get from those stable steps over there. And I actually say that Wildwoods personally, for my money, have best in class uh, campsite stability, which I, I think is no small thing. And again, outdoors here, we've got this little uh, mini fridge station to keep a couple little drinks outdoors when you need them. You've got the uh, pull-out griddle top right there when you want it. And uh, on the side over there, just a handy little sprayer port. It's cold water only, but I like how Wildwood includes that sort of residential style sprayer head. So if you need to do some campsite cleanups or something like that, maybe you're cleaning some fish or anything of that nature, if you've been out and you, you caught a mess of those things, you know, it's just, it's a very handy utility function space. Now, uh, the door is anti-slam. Like I said, if, if I had the one thing I could change on a Wildwood, I would put a window in the door, but it's not going to stop me from camping. It's not an all stop thing for me. It's just a preference I would personally like to see. Outdoor uh, TV hookups and speakers down here at like ground level, picnic table level, as opposed to up top where you got to crank them up to 11, where you're blowing the neighbors away with your... I don't know, what are we listening to today? Let's see, Bob, Bob Seeger came to mind? All right, we're listening to Bob Seeger today. You get the idea. The, uh, over here, huge pass-through on these two. I, I, I don't know what Bob Vila space-time continuum wizardry magic they put into these pass-through spaces, but they have some of the largest pass-throughs in this class I've ever seen. They also do a very cool thing here. You have a power stabilizer jack option with Wildwoods, but they always come with the handy little, uh, I am not left-handed. How stupid is this, by the way? I can carry like all of the groceries from my car to the house in one load with just my left hand. Like I can, I can hold stuff like crazy with this, but you give me a pencil or you give me something thin like that. And my left hand's like, oh yeah, no bro, sorry. I'm not good at that. Like why, why do we have one hand that's good at stuff and one hand that's not? Sorry, I got off topic. What I'm getting at is they always come with a little drill bit adapter. So if you can, uh, you can turn this into a bit of a, what I tongue in cheek call the cordless jack situation. You get yourself the little drill, zip, zip. There you go. A uh, simple side mount solar prep plug here. If you want to do a little sun chasing, I'll come back and get that put in its right spot. Apologies if I seemed a little more distracted than normal right there. The, uh, the hand that I'm holding the camera with, a nice little honeybee landed on that hand, and I was just sitting there thinking, please don't sting me. Please don't sting me. And thankfully, uh, his honeyness did not. 67% uh, thicker uh, front nose skin on this. Basically, the entire nose is effectively stone guard, but you just have a more obvious dedicated diamond plate down below, and frankly, a pretty darn big one. Uh, these normally come with 20-pound tanks. There's an option for 30 pound tanks, but they always use a 30 pound tank cover. So if you want to swap up to that after the aftermarket, it's, it's real easy to, uh, you just add a longer post uh, to hold the tanks down and swap the tanks in as you please. There you go. Power tongue jack doing the heavy lifting for us. 
Uh, room for two batteries. Now from Halet RV, you'll receive your first uh, 12 volt lead acid battery at no additional charge. That's just part of the, uh, the price tag with us. Um, we have other battery options if you want to go lithium, if you want to go AGM, if you just want to have a second battery to go six volts. We can do all those things for you back in our parts shop. You may have also noticed how it has that handy battery disconnect switch so that uh, when the RV is just sitting in storage, your batteries aren't getting, you know, just drained and nuked by all the different electronics in the RV. Something you couldn't see as easily with that baggage door lifted up earlier on the other side is the magnet holdbacks here making for easy kind of come and go. Just in front of the sewer station here, you have a, a, a black tank utility flush and they have one of, uh, and actually I'm, I'm going to say, I feel they have the best underbelly protection available in this class. They literally borrowed this from big Forest River luxury fifth wheels. They call it the accessibility, but these are like four by eight foot sectionalized underbelly panels that first of all, they are far more impact resistant than a common corrugated plastic underbelly enclosure. The other thing is, it's being sectionalized. God forbid you have to get down there for service reasons. You don't have to take just a razor knife and cut access panels. You can drop the panel you need, do the work you need, put the panel back up. You'll never notice that anything was ever done. So it'll keep your RV looking better. Plus it's better protection and it is forced air heated down there. The uh, slide out, you might notice the little brackets at the top corners of the slide. This is slide awning ready. So if that's something you're kind of interested in learning about, we can do those things for you here at Halet RV. Now let's talk ladders. Obviously you don't see one. Full Wildwoods like this with almost no exceptions, basically uh, a full Wildwood, not an X-Lite, uh, is rear ladder prepped. They don't offer factory ladders, but they do put the, the mounts in the walls if you or I want to add one of those things. The only times that a Wildwood won't have a rear ladder prep is in the case of something with a giant rear window like a 27RE or uh, weirdly, the 26 D Bud bunkhouse. There's just there's so many things in the rear wall that they just don't have the room to uh, to put a ladder there. But the roof is fully walkable. The floor is 5 8 tongue and groove plywood. Your roof uh, studs and wall studs are 16 inches on center. Your floor studs are an average of 12 inches on center. It's a very solidly uh, built product. Those those qualities, those construction qualities I just gave you are very conventional within this class, but they're executed nicely. What you don't see below the skin, and we have a full Wildwood factory tour showing you these things before the skin goes on, is like areas over here where your outside speakers are mounted, they have plywood backers. They're not using random OSB scrap. One of the benefits of uh, a Wildwood being one of the most popular, highest volume things at all of Forest River is that they get to kind of pick some better materials sometimes and with their volume, their buying power, they can accomplish that. So what do you think guys? I uh, I don't think it's an accident. Like I said, this one has earned its status as the number one selling non-bunkhouse wildwood out there. Uh, I, I see people use these in uh, parks for like almost full-time sites. Like I see this floor plan come in on trade every now and then someone's like, yeah, I've, I've never towed the thing. I took it to the park and just leveled it out and there it sat. And I see people tow these all over the place. Again, at 6,700 pounds, it's still very towable. And again, it doesn't have full travel road mode access, but I think it has enough in a pinch you can get yourself through. But that's my take on it. Let me know what you think. And again, check out the Cherokee version of this with the link in the video description by comparison. And let me know which one you'd go with and why. Short of that, thanks for joining us. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone.